the official podcast back at you again here with episode 370 maybe ish something like that and what a crazy week it's been huh boys yes i oh, it's have been a question and i think charlie's the man to answer it what's Give up it with me. with the day before the day tomorrow what's the big game what's the thing that i can't stop seeing the day before the day before it is the day before could you give us a rundown on that whole thing because i had never even heard of this game until people started saying it's a big scam yeah so it was steam's most wishlisted game a while back based off a couple of trailers that the developers were dropping there became a bit of a conspiracy theory that the game wasn't real because the trailers were kind of faked it wasn't like actual gameplay or anything mm -hmm. and the, st the studio kept putting off like showcasing footage or anything eventually people just came to the realization like yeah this is very shady this is super weird this game probably doesn't exist it's just one big giant fraud then december 7th the game actually comes out and it's nothing like the trailers it's a totally different game they were advertising an mmo they released an extraction shooter bunch of assets nothing good about it absolutely unplayable garbage and now, four days later, the studio announced they're shutting down. They took the game off Steam, and they've deleted all of their videos and left. <laughs> four so days later? Holy yep. shit. Was it a fully paid game, or was it free yep, to play? It was, it was 40 bones. So do you think they closed the studio so they don't have to issue refunds? Well, you can get refunds, but I don't know if it's them. I don't know how the refunds work. I don't know if it's Steam that picks up the bill or if they do it. I, mm. like, I don't really know, but you can get refunds. Okay, you can still refund it through Steam. If the game was sold for $40 and there were, well, a couple hundred thousand players like that bought the game, you said it was like pretty successful in that front, right? People buying it. Yeah, it was it. like, they had a peak concurrent of like 30, 40,000 players, or maybe even 50. Yeah, I, well, that sounds like they're just, uh, it's just a scam and they're running, right? They're just yep. saying, all right, yeah. we're, we're done, we're out. We'll take the money. Yep flee the scene what i want to think they're doing or think they can get away with is they put out a scam game all the hype they make all the sales and then they play it off as no we made a great game buy it buy it buy it and then they close the studio so they can say oh we can't refund you or we can't you know some sort of thing they're trying to do where they get away with just taking money and then you know absolving responsibility yeah, except I don't think that works because I think Steam hold, holds onto the money for like 30 days or something. Mm. Like yeah, that they've probably. got systems in place yeah. where they where they hold onto the money. It just it also lets them um never have to update it or say, "Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, we'll fix it." If they just dissolve the studio, they can just wipe their hands Which of it. Which is what they did. Is it possible that they did just accrue so much fucking debt trying to make this game? Um, that then now they're like, yeah, there's no way we're going to be able to pay off this debt. We need to close shop and go bankrupt, basically. I don't know where they would have spent that money because the game is a lot of assets and it's absolutely fucking terribly made. It is horrible. <laughs> what do you mean by a lot of assets? What? What do you mean by a lot of assets? You mean asset flips? Yeah, what do you oh, mean? Oh, no, no, no. Like, they purchased them. So, like, the actual uh -huh. map it all takes place on, like, the actual whole game zone is just an asset that they bought <laughs> so pre-made assets so they didn't do a lot of work yeah no 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 jesus christ yeah okay jesus so what is so actually bad about the game is it just completely devoid of any kind of gameplay so everything that could be wrong with a game is wrong with it it's terrible to play like it actually runs really badly it's also a zombie extraction shooter, but it can only ever spawn up to four zombies on the entire map at any given time, I'm pretty sure, because <laughs> that's the most I ever saw, around four hours of gameplay. And it also is locked to 30 players per instance, and you never <laughs> see the other players ever. And it's a massive fucking map. So at most, you'll find like one zombie here and there. The zombies are super slow, super unimpressive, like they don't really do anything. And it just fucking sucks to shoot as well. The game has like this bullet lag where you'll shoot and it takes like almost a second for the bullet to go where you want it to. So it's terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah, it's wild. I do remember the trailers came out for the game. Uh, there was like hype leading up to it a few months back. But to me, it all, it, it like from the get go, it looked like a game that would not release in a good state or a state at all. Like I, I really thought that it would never release. Yeah. I really thought it was just kind of like what was that game from a while ago that was coaxing on Silent Hill? 
like Silent Hill hype. They were like, oh, this might be a, this might be a new Silent Hill game. And then it came out. Well, it didn't come out, but they released a trailer. Blue and Box. It wasn't Silent Hill. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Has you that about come Blue out? Box. No, that, yeah. that was another fake game. <laughs> That's still not out, I don't think. <laughs> Are they Very still cool. developing it? No, I haven't heard anything about Blue Box in, fuck, like eight, nine months now or something. Man, there must be so many of these little game studios that pop up and just create this like um, this scam image of a game immediately just to get like an, a massive amount of uh, funding or whatever investments and then just dip. Just say, yeah. oh, game too hard to make. Thanks for the money, suckers. I've got a strong feeling about Pal World. You remember that po- Pokemon game with guns and like actual yeah. violence? I have a very good feeling that's going to go the same path. Look, we made an adult Pokemon game, and then it's just going to be asset flips and garbage and nothing. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Which is ve- yeah, it's very unfortunate because I think that looks really cool if that's the an actual game. The concept looks sick. Yeah, mm. well, at least goofy. I don't know if it'll be a good game, but it looks like a goofy concept. But I, I really yeah. do think it's just going to release and be like bad, <laughs> just like yeah. it doesn't work. I'm a I'm a simple man though. You tell me you made a Pokemon game with guns, and I'm immediately interested to play it. You know, that's all it takes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh well, well that's uh, that's the end to this year of video gaming. <laughs> it kind of ended on a whimper. <laughs> and this episode, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. E three is dead. Finally, yeah. we just we just dead. got word of mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I thought mm-hmm. they've died like six times in the last year. Every time they put out a tweet, it's like, oh, we might or might not be dead. Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> and now it sounds like this is actually it. They, mm-hmm. They're gone. Uh, I'm sad. Yeah. I I'm honestly sad. Is it a big loss? Why? Yes. I, I fucking love E3. Like, E3 yeah, was like so Christmas It used to me. be great. It, it used to be very, very cool during E3 weekend to just... It, it, it felt like an actual holiday in a way. Where it was, it was an just, event. It was, yeah, an event. it was an event and yeah, lots of stuff was. was going on and it lasted like two or three days. It was great. And honestly, I, like, I like the Game Awards and what the game uh, Jeff Keighley's trying to do. He's trying to like enter the same space, but it, it that just feels weirdly like so much more corporate. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not going to see the same like shitty Konami presentations that they used to do at E3. I'm not going to see those same moments happen again. And it's just, yeah. I, I like having all of that all of those things condensed into like one weekend as well. It just felt so much more, I don't know, hype. We're back to there's too much money in gaming now that it has to tow this very safe line. E3, yeah, it was obviously the biggest gaming thing of the year, but it didn't have nearly the money that gaming has today. So back then it still felt like this, all the developers doing their own thing kind of show. But the Game Awards feels very, very regimented, very, you know what to expect, you know? And you know what? You know what actually is interesting to me uh, that was really good about E3 is because it was so condensed, everything was forced to be in that same kind of weekend. I really feel like it brought out the competitive nature of the industry and really forced these developers and publishers to really put on a strong presentation. Because the week the week after E3, you'd constantly be talking about who won E3, yep. right? report cards, who had yeah. the best presentation. E3 report yeah, exactly. cards was one of my favorite things to look at, where they would grade every conference and find a winner. Yeah. Yeah, and now we don't do that because the 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 companies just release their presentations whenever yeah. they feel like it. Basically, whenever they have something to yeah. present. In a shockingly forward-thinking move, which is very different for the company, Nintendo got it right from the beginning and said, "Why don't we just do our own show? We don't need this anymore." And started doing directs and bailed out E three. They got too bullied from Miyamoto uh, doing we we dances on stage, <laughs> and then they decided, all right, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad though. I really, I really will miss E3. Kai, I know it sounds like you don't like it. Why? No, I don't care. <laughs> it's not not liking it. You never tuned in each each E3. Hmm? I care because mostly the good memories. Honestly, like it, it was just. I used to be really yeah, excited. Nostalgia. I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I it's mean, an age thing or not. Industry is changing. Yeah, it was bound to happen. Like I, I can totally see why it, it died. Um, it would have been extremely expensive to put on, and I think the audience numbers were diminishing. Right, like less people were going each year, even before COVID. And yeah, it's the, also the not, price to host it was going up. 
it's also not how people consume information anymore. I mean, the peaks of E3 were, what, 2001 to 2006? That was before social media was even remotely what it is today. Now, why ever do an E3 for your game or wait till the conference when you yeah. can just put it on Twitter and it'll get millions of views? Right. Plus, it's always the same games being announced. Here's entry 27 in the same slop franchise that you all knew was coming anyway. Yeah. Because we announced it five years before. That's another change as yeah. well. It's not as exciting. I mean, um, Call of Duty. EA, Go ahead. EA is the only uh, <laughs> publisher at the moment. I hate EA, by the way. But EA is genuinely the only publisher, the big publisher, that I think is actually trying to put out new games under their EA Originals uh, banner. They're actually funding some pretty interesting smaller games. Uh, so is Capcom, new entries. Though, to be fair. Oh, uh, yeah, I was talking Western. I, I don't know much oh. about Yeah, Capcom is going market. pretty hard on Originals now, too. Yeah. yeah, And they're good. I, I do like to see it. I, yeah, I do like to see these new games being made. Like, It Takes Two, I think, was the only game in the last 10 years to win the Game Awards and be a new entry in like a new IP or whatever. And that was EA, EA Originals. Like, that's wild. Well, so another funny one. I, I looked at the winners of the last decade for that, and the other one is Overwatch. The first Overwatch one game of the year, and that game technically does not exist anymore. You can no longer play <laughs> yeah. it. Isn't that great? I think it also, didn't it also win Best Continued Service or Best, like, Support? Something Maybe like that? Maybe at some point it did. Yeah. You yeah, can't play it anymore. You year. literally cannot play the first Overwatch anymore. So, Andrew, did you watch the Game Awards this year? Did you guys? No, I know me and Andrew, uh, Charlie did. No, and that was my that was my big topic I wanted to bring to the show. So I didn't watch it. I was doing some stuff. I wasn't, you know, around. And I've talked to a bunch of people because I looked up the trailers after, and I was like, "Oh, new Kojima project, neat." Uh, da, 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 da. And every single person I've talked to has said that this Game Awards was, like, the most forgettable fucking thing ever. Like, it just was, like... Yeah. It was there. Big deal. I left it saying... Uh, it was fine. Uh, it was like that's fine. fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing blew me away. I did, like, yeah. the Matthew McConaughey uh, trailer. He's game. He, he's in a game now. It's, like, I'm... It's because it's, like... It's only because the talent attached to that project is, like, ex-Bioware right. devs. Like, Drew Carpshin, who's a great writer, who was, like instrumental in the mass effect series so i'm excited to, to see what they do with that but beyond that like i don't know there's like big walk um people people who like monster hunter will be happy because of the big reveal for the that was the game biggest was announcement the right hunter. the new monster hunter yeah that was yeah that was so the big i one. looked at the game list and besides a new monster hunter everything was just Sure. Okay. Neat. And there were no particularly funny or weird moments either that people would like latch onto. No. Nah. Like, like it was it like it was seriously was. like three and a half hours, three and a half hours of like maybe eighty percent ads, ten percent game awards, and then like maybe ten percent. So, well, actually, no, there was a way larger amount of just celebrities endlessly talking about stuff. Yep. And now we're reaching the problem that all the other award shows have, and that fucking E three had. Why? bother watching this when i can just wait for all the trailers to come out and go watch those individually yeah you know because it's supposed to be just like a big event it's be it's supposed to be about the awards i like i want i want the awards to have more like impact it's so fucking strange to me that you can do the game awards and then like 90 percent of the awards are just breezed through in before the show or like in little ad segments between between trailers it's like it's just a trailer show now it's like the game was what the game was themselves. Was. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like the game. It, I don't know. It feels kind of disrespectful to the developers Shh. as well. <laughs> like, imagine your game is nominated and it, like Jeff Keighley just breezes through it in like two seconds. I don't mm -hmm. know. It, it felt it felt really weird to me. Just so that he could have Kojima up on the stage to jerk him off for another fifteen minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you really hate Kojima. <laughs> I don't look, look. Right. I don't hate Kojima. I think he, you know, he's obviously earned his place in the hall of, you know, visionaries and great. God damn right but he has. At the, at the same time, this man is just constantly <laughs> glazed endlessly. He <laughs> he's is endlessly every, glazed. He's being yeah. edged it is for so, all eternity, yeah. yeah. It's insufferable. It's, I don't know if insufferable is the right word, but every time he shows up, it's just 15 minutes of him, like, 
taking compliments and not giving any information about the things he's making. Like he he spent 15 minutes announcing OD and we got nothing from it. Just like a, a minute trailer of celebrities uh, <laughs> screaming at the camera, basically. It's like, what is this? So what I will give him credit for is when he does release games, they are definitely I'm trying to think of the term. They're like tech pushing games. They're they're new ideas. They always do something to a new level. Like Metal Gear 5 had the Fox engine, which was an incredibly revolutionary lighting tech. Death Stranding at least tried to do a different kind of idea and make walking simulators that were like fun and interesting in an actual movie. Like when he does release a game, work. it's worth the hype usually. Unlike Todd Howard or other game developers like him, where they just put out the same fucking thing, you know. I do like that we I do like that we have people like this in the industry, like the big names. I think it's important for an industry to have those kinds of icons. It's just that it goes over the top with Kojima, in my opinion. It goes into like worship level of territory that just it's uncomfortable. Every profession needs its Michael Jordan. And if gaming's is going to be Kojima, I'm perfectly okay with that. He's a good candidate. Yeah, but De I didn't like Death Stranding, so... Oh, fuck you! I also didn't like Death Stranding. Oh, fuck you! I loved it! It was great! You've just convinced yourself you liked it. It was the best boring experience I've ever had. You just used the word boring to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I unironically liked it. That's a Kojima plot twist right there. <laughs> I'll admit, it is it is not everyone's cup of tea, but it, to me, I got invested in the story and the world, and I really liked trudging through to get to the next cutscene. I enjoyed it. I mean, with Kojima, it's like, yeah, he's an industry titan, right? But it just feels so weird to me that the biggest icon in the industry is clearly someone that very obviously wants to just make movies instead of video games <laughs> at this point. He's outwardly said like, that. No, he's, he's outwardly admitted that. He's hourly yeah. told people I would have wa I wanted to be a Hollywood director, but this is where I am. He has enough money, just go make movies. I wish that, the video game industry makes so much fucking money. I wish they'd stop this dance with like the movie industry where they're sucking up to them, like they're you know undervalued little brother or whatever. Like just this, the amount of celebrities that came out on stage during the game awards, it's just awkward. You're bigger than them. Act like it. Start slinging your dick around. <laughs> Do you remember ten years ago? when a celebrity in a video game was seen as a joke and it was like yeah. where failed careers would go or no one actually cared they'd be like oh great the rock did face cam for the scorpion king game that's so Vin cool Diesel. yeah yeah. Uh, Vin Diesel, yeah bruce willis was in a notoriously god-awful playstation one video game back in the day but like it used to be this it used to be just a gimmick it was like oh this guy's in it that's cool but now it's so radically shifted that they're like wow i can't believe it they got this guy in the video game i'm gonna buy it just for him that's crazy just like hollywood anyone, yeah. wait wait does anyone say that does anyone buy video games just for i mean for voice no. actors maybe but for celebrities i don't think so which is Ooh. what my point is it's like this weird it's like this weird obsession with the movie industry thinking it gives you any clout when in fact no one cares like, that's my point. No one cares that you got fucking, I don't know. Uh, no, they, no, no, no. There are differences. There, There is. It is different now. Um, a good example is Advanced Warfare. Kevin Spacey was a huge draw for that game. They marketed the shit out of them. really. People was were going to buy it regardless. It was Call of Duty. Yeah, it's not like Kevin they, Spacey moved those units. Yeah, but it definitely They marketed helped. the hell out of it. No, I don't it think... I, it, didn't, it didn't detract. It, did, it certainly didn't detract, but I don't think... I don't think anyone who wasn't already going to get the game saw Kevin Spacey and like, whoa, wait a minute. All That's, right, I'm getting it. That is totally true. But look at the other side of people who weren't interested in the game, like old people who watched House of Cards and they go, oh, that's the guy from House of Cards. I'll try the game. Sure. <laughs> I don't think any, I don't think anyone did that. If it didn't work, they wouldn't push it so hard. Remember the Death Stranding marketing with Mads Mikkelsen and Kojima would post like selfies with them every single day, almost. Mm -hmm. And everybody started shipping them. All right, so it makes noise, maybe, but I, I don't think people specifically play the games exclusively for an actor that shows up. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't no, that's just my feeling. No. If it was Taylor it Swift, then I think effect. they would. <laughs> I don't think even Kojima could afford her. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't I don't think countries can afford her. Like, all of France could spend <laughs> their GDP on her, and it still wouldn't be enough. 
You guys get. I, I was talking to Kyra about this the other day. You guys gave me shit a few weeks ago because I said she was bigger than um, Michael Jackson. I'm standing by that. She was just named Times Person of the Year in such a like massively tumultuous year full of <laughs> things outside of music. Uh, yeah, tumultuous. I think that's tumultuous. Word. Yeah. I mean, nothing much happened. She deserves it. I don't know why everybody's mad at that. She sold out concerts and became it. a billionaire, and with like three best-selling albums. No, I'm just no, telling I'm you, it is it. not surprising at all. There really wasn't much of a contender. All right, I'm not surprised. That's my point. I, was, I, I, I said a few weeks ago that she's bigger than Michael Jackson. You guys are the ones that should be surprised. Jay, she's not bigger than Michael Jackson, though. Not she yet. She is. But she can she be. She is. She's made billions from just touring alone. Well, the industry itself has made billions more than it did back when Michael Jackson yeah. was the king. It, it, everything's just grown. If they both existed right now, at the same time, who do you think would be bigger? Taylor Swift would be bigger. Yes. If Michael Jackson was still around, like Taylor Swift would be bigger, but that's kind of a moot argument. Is it? I mean, that's pretty apt in my opinion. <laughs> ja- Michael Jackson's uh, music was a product of its time in a way. It is timeless, but it yeah, very, yeah, yeah, very yeah. much was also 80s and it, it fit in perfectly. Number two, Taylor Swift has the advantage of instant entertainment. She can put her videos on YouTube and garner billions of views. She can upload clips and selfies and whatever. Michael Jackson could not do that. He just had to put out records and music videos on TV and that shit, which is a much smaller reach. And number three, yeah, okay, exactly. I just looked this up, Jackson. Michael Jackson's net worth at death was $2.4 billion. So it's really, you know, if he came out in this era where there's much, much more money in the music industry, I have a feeling he'd be far higher than Taylor Swift if it was the same level of popularity. It's a possibility. He did, we were forgetting though, he did own an amusement park, right? Yeah, he had a castle at his house. Yeah, there could have been a lot of money from ticket sales there that we're not cluing into the... That you're not cluing in. We all disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you roped this into your side. It's like, guys, wait a minute. We should really consider that Michael Jackson might be bigger. <laughs> Who was the one that said Taylor Swift was bigger? Was that Kai, I believe? That yeah, sounds like Kai that said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still stand by. I still think if like even if if Taylor Swift was taking back to the eighties in a like a time chamber or whatever, and and they were competing, I think she'd be bigger. No, and I know why Michael Jackson would have more money. It's because he saved money by switching to Mint Mobile. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the, he was smarter in that capacity. Yes, yeah. yes. Taylor Swift probably uses a default wireless service. I'm not going to name names, but one that you're probably not a big fan of. One that's got terrible service and. Really, really, lack of support, bad signal, all the problems that you can think of. But Michael Jackson, the smart investor that he was, the billionaire of a different era that he became to be, definitely used Mint Mobile. Because it is the best wireless plan that you can imagine, and it's got the best wireless deal of the year for the holidays. When you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. That'll be six months of premium wireless service for the price of three. Mint Mobile plans start at just $15 a month. And that means that for just 15 bucks, you're going to get another three months. And that's going to save you a lot of money and be a fantastic little way to talk to people. You get to use your own phone with a Mint Mobile plan and you're going to switch effortlessly thanks to eSIM. I don't think SIM cards are really much of a thing anymore except for special cases. And Mint Mobile is a product of the future and said, we know, don't bother with that. Just switch using our eSIM, keep your phone, don't worry about a thing. You can also get six months for free when you buy a new device under a Mint Mobile plan. Something else to think about. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data on the nation's largest 5G network. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash official. That's mintmobile.com slash official. New customers only. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. mintmobile.com slash official. Man, if I had to give a game award for the best ad integrations into podcasts, I'd give it to you, Andrew. That oh, thank God. I thought you were going to say Charlie. <laughs> it was a close year. It was a close second. It was a close so, one. Um, Charlie, what would you say was the biggest like kind of moment of the game awards this year? Nothing. 
Absolutely nothing, Jackson. <laughs> I guess he chose that time to fucking flee the scene. <laughs> he's, he's stunned. Trying to <laughs> bring people into a conversation. <laughs> How dare you? It's like he goes out of his way to make me uncomfortable. <laughs> This is unnecessarily mean. <laughs> it's still going. What was your That's favorite funny. moments, Jackson? I don't actually know. I don't. I, I guess I always like the uh, the medley. You know, when they do the um the mu- the music <clears throat> right before the game the game of the year is announced, where they mm-hmm. like they take all the games that are nominated for game of the year, and then they play the orchestra plays the theme songs for all of those together. Mm-hmm. I really like that. But beyond that, yeah, I don't like anything. I'm a very big fan of Hard Drive. I think they're a great satirical website, and they fucking nailed it with their take of uh, Nintendo resists urge to DMCA the Game Awards when they played Tears of the Kingdom's <laughs> theme. It's yeah. spot on. Yeah. So, wait. The, the, I, there was one category that I did want to talk about, though. I'm trying to remember what it was, though. I think it was Best, best Ongoing Games. Oh. No, why, why Best Performance? That was like the only one you and I were surprised about. We thought either Yuri or Bin Star would win. Oh, right. No. I, I want to talk about best ongoing because I feel like... All right, so best ongoing. Awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Cyberpunk 2077 won. Do you guys agree with that? No. I mean, it brought the game back from the dead, basically, but I think it should have gone to Destiny 2, to be honest. <laughs> see but but that category to me seems like you know like an mmo or something like a game that's continuously kind of like online like a Fortnite or something i'll tell you what the answer is the answer is Fortnite, and it's not even close yeah the it game, been yeah, the game yeah. every week adds a new giant content patch they just a f- week ago added three whole new games to it not just game modes but whole games like that's insane yeah, yeah. that's crazy Fortnite is without a doubt the winner of best ongoing game. We can talk about Fortnite again. We briefly touched on it yesterday, but that game is like actually, I think, is going to be even huge, somehow huger than it already is. Yeah, like way larger than it already is. Uh, Matt, Matt, Aaron, Chase, and I played it last night. That game is so fucking fun. It's we only great. played the custom. We we just played the custom games and had a fucking blast. We even just grinded like normal playing Fortnite, no build. It's so fun. The yeah. game is so yeah. fun. It's ridiculous. It, yeah. it nails it. And it's all it's free. fucking great. <laughs> yeah, and it's free. It's 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 unlimited games for free. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you know what's what's even more crazy is it's not it's not even obnoxious in terms of its monetization. Like its item shop is not obnoxious to me. Like every other fucking full price game with money shops or whatever is infinitely more obnoxious than the my uh, the Fortnite one in my opinion. Like yeah, I it's, agree. It's, it's not even bad. It, it, I don't. It's crazy to be talking about Fortnite in this way of all games, but it truly is like yep. an incredibly special game. Like what they've done with that is unreal. It's where all of Epic's money is going. I don't know what they've done specifically to warp it, but in the last couple years, it's just gone from this kind of a oh, fuck Fortnite to ooh Fortnite. You know, they've just changed. I think, it. I think we're. I think we do it a discredit though, because it, it was big originally for a reason. I think they've always been successful for a reason. Um, I think it's just right now we're seeing their vision for the future actually like make sense to us. Like this portal of infinite games, like Charlie said. Like it's it, it's the only time I've ever looked at a, a game, a game's vision, and said, uh, "Oh yeah, this makes sense. I can absolutely see where they're going, and this is going to be huge." Like this is Roblox on steroids, basically. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, now. well, they're investing a lot of it. tech into it too. They've made a complete like sub editor under the Unreal Engine called Unreal for Fortnite or something. Yeah, and a whole yeah. scripting language for it too called Verse. So that even you know, if you if you're not quite the professional on the level of working with Unreal Engine, you can still make games for Fortnite by learning this scripting language and importing your models and such. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. I do think they're gonna eat Roblox's lunch at this pace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, Roblox looks just, like shit. <laughs> it's also just a much more um, <sighs> complex th- entity than Roblox. Like Roblox's tools are very more limited compared to Fortnite's when you just have the Unreal Engine at your disposal. So the potential mm-hmm. for Fortnite is way higher. 
I think the potential for audience is much higher with Fortnite as well because I don't feel weird playing Fortnite. And if I logged into Fortnite, I'd immediately, I mean, Roblox, I'd immediately feel weird. Yeah. I'd be like, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and true. I, and yeah, I think that's true. a that's a cultural shift recently too. It feels like a few years ago, if you played Fortnite, it, it was just like, oh, you're a kid or you're just a dumb mainstream gamer or like there was nothing to it. But now when you play it, it's like everyone's playing Fortnite and it's just good and fun and everyone likes it. It what is, change? So, They're gonna make so a buttload fun. of money too. You know, Jackson mentioned the item shop. Epic Games won a massive victory this week against Google. The jury ruled oh, really? that um, Google is in fact the monopoly, and they need to allow uh, game developers and app developers in general to be able to basically sell in-game items outside of Google's ecosystem, and that Google can't just take a thirty wow. percent cut of everything. Holy so, shit! Why wow, that is a huge I, win. I assume they're yeah. gonna. I assume they're going to appeal it, but yeah, that is a massive deal. That's like 30% didn't, didn't op- more revenue for Fortnite yeah, if they I th- can make their own shop. I thought they I thought they had already argued this case. Maybe it was in Apple's situation, Apple. like Apple's ecosystem yeah. and Apple won. So what changed with Google? I don't know if Apple won, but I mean, there's a sure long Apple cases, won. but in this case, in Google's case, the entire jury looked at it and said, yeah, Google's anti-competitive and a monopoly so that's nice i hope that sticks the decision i mean yeah. even if they appeal yeah. and whatnot um fuck google yeah i agree <laughs> uh, that's that's huge fortnite <laughs> fortnite's yeah, fuck already google. making go a lot of epic money games they have fortnite yeah let's go epic <laughs> this the the future for fortnite is insane though if they like that so Recently, in the last week, we saw their first step into multiple games within the Fortnite umbrella. Yep. We saw Lego Fortnite, Fortnite, uh, no, what, what's Rock, it's Rocket so they, Racing. So they Rocket did Lego Fortnite, Fortnite, they Festivals. did Rocket Racing, and the Harmonix Rhythm game. Yeah, um, yep. fuck, Fortnite Festivals. I, 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 uh, yep, right. So immediately, Lego Fortnite, Lego Fortnite came out, and I was like, okay, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. So I hopped in. I was expecting just like a dumb, you know, battle royale gimmick mode where you just play as Lego people or whatever, especially with like Fortnite's already existing building system. I was not expecting a full fledged fucking survival game, which I would totally be happy to recommend people buy for like 30 bucks or whatever, like a full, a full actual game within just an entirely like unique experience, just a full fledged game. I wasn't expecting it. I was blown away. Like it was, inc- it was amazing. And then I assume yeah. the other two are just like that as well. So I, think, I've only dabbled in Lego Fortnite for a little bit, but it is actually super impressive. Yeah, <laughs> like they it's built it's, it's in depth. Putting it's out super it's just Minecraft. They put Minecraft in Fortnite and that sounds yeah, like a joke, did. but they actually did it. The time that I knew that this was legit, because I watched the announcements and I was like, okay, these are just side whatever. They're just adding new modes. But the moment I knew it was legit is they said, we're adding a new rhythm game. And it's made by Harmonix. And I thought, wait, those are the people who made Guitar Hero. Like, like straight yeah. up invented it. Holy shit, this could be a thing. And then I checked it out, and yeah, all three games are fully fleshed out, actual, real games. With no bullshit. And they're free. Like, yeah. And they're free. If they, can t- if they continue <laughs> adding fucking... If they continue adding these experiences, getting their developers to work on Fortnite games, and constantly update them... You won't need to buy another video game ever. You can just yeah. log into Fortnite. That's exactly what Matt <laughs> said too. Fortnite is basically becoming a console. It's it's just the yeah, place yeah. where you choose what That's you want to play. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I was genuinely thinking, hold on a second. This is basically what Microsoft and Sony did. Like, yeah. what if what if uh, we have a Fortnite console in the next six years? It's like this market, um, you know, entry to market device that comes preloaded with Fortnite. And it's just optimized for Fortnite. Well, here's the other thing. Here's the other big take on it. Your cosmetics transfer between the games, right? Like if you buy Peter Griffin in Fortnite, you can use him in Lego and in uh, the harmonics game, right? Uh, That's something I want to mention real quick. I think every skin in the game has a Lego version too. Do you know how long that must have taken? It must have taken forever. So it that's, must have, it, well, each each one would each one would need to be like specifically designed and then rigged as well, which is just insane. That's so, so that's much. that's also extremely impressive, and that's part of it. But another thing that I don't think a lot of people have thought about is we have now successfully realized the pipe dream that was pitched by NFTs. Do you remember when the gaming NFT pipeline was supposed to be, you can download the blockchain for this character and take their weapon into this MMO and then grind it and then pull it into this game, blah, blah, blah. You can now do that with Fortnite. 
They have done it. <laughs> that yeah, is you, so true. <laughs> it is actually true. You buy the scanner, you earn the thing, you can now use it in the driving game. Congratulations. Yeah. You could, no blockchain yeah, bullshit. Man. There it is. It's right there. And this, I feel like this is cool. just a, I feel like this is just a taste of what, uh, you know, Fortnite and Epic is capable of as well. And it's still just enough to like explode my imagination. Like it, it is, it's actually going to be nuts these next few mm -hmm. years in Fortnite, especially with the success. Like they, uh, I think their player count is the highest it's ever been ever deserved too. It's the best it's ever been to play. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. How long until, because the Epic game store is carried entirely by Fortnite. That's, that's a truth. We all know how long till they just buy yeah. steam. Hmm. I don't think they'll ever bother. I don't <laughs> no, see why they, they would. But, and Steve, <laughs> yeah, Valve would never <laughs> sell it. But Yeah, they probably think they're operating in entirely different markets, honestly. Yeah. It's just funny to me that Fortnite carries their store so hard because everyone hates Epic Games Store. Like, everyone just says yeah, negative stuff bad. about it. But Fortnite, everyone loves it, and it's only on there. It's, it's like a necessary evil to play. It's basically a Fortnite launcher these days, you know? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Wasn't Epic uh, in trouble like three months ago, though? Kaya, didn't they lay off like half? Yeah, like, they a laid off of 800 something employees because of financial issues. So. But they did keep like all of the core team, they said. Who did they let go? Didn't they, they, let did go. they sell off Bandcamp or something? They did, a, I, I think, something with Bandcamp. The one that I know that was a big one because it, it really made me upset is they laid off so much for like Rocket League. Like they oh. <laughs> gutted a lot of like Rocket League's internals, especially for esports. So it's been in shambles. Hmm. Well, esports doesn't make a lot of money, does yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't make money. So like I, I get why if they're trying to like, I don't know, pinch pennies, but it still sucks. Oh, and Super yeah. Awesome they let go and some other studio too. Well, maybe now with the success, they can just hire them all back. <laughs> just say, psych, yeah, you're back. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, I definitely think Fortnite is the most interesting kind of property in games at the moment for the future. Which yes. Is, imagine, remember PlayerUnknown Battleground? What happened to that guy? What's he doing? Is he working uh, making, his own <laughs> making billions of dollars off of China and Thailand and all of Asia. It's still huge in Asia. They love it. Yeah. PUBG <laughs> Mobile's so fucking yeah. big. PUBG Mobile's massive. The main PUBG game is still very popular. Asia loves the fucking game. It's everywhere. Well, it's not just Asia, though. Even here, a lot of people play PUBG Mobile. It's still very popular. True. True. I just know they're hosting okay. the uh, like a PUBG Major, and I believe it's in Thailand or Taiwan. One of the two. Put it in Fortnite. Flex yeah. on the rest of the planet. Just put it in Fortnite. GTA 2. Tim Sweeney, well, if you're by listening, this point, just by this release point, Fortnite, GTA 6 in Fortnite. By this point, Fortnite is such a good co-op for studios, too. Let's, um, a joke I made to one of my friends is, how does it feel knowing Master Chief is best represented in Fortnite of all games? All you have to yeah, do you is made that studio. Joke yesterday on the show. All you have to do is put your character in Fortnite, give them the rights to it, and you get a part of the profit. It, why not do it? You may as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, well. they've, they've nailed their business yeah. model. Like, it, everything is so perfect in Fortnite. I've, now we're glazing fucking Fortnite like it's Kojima, but seriously. Wait, yeah, wait. Why is Kojima, like, praised this much? Who, who's in charge of Epic? It's Tim Sweeney, right? Or did he leave? No, he's no, no, you're thinking so. Donald Mustard. Donald Mustard. Mustard, left, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's a true visionary. That's who I want to get behind. Donald Mustard. Mustard. Donald Mustard? Yeah, he, that a joke he, yeah. he, he murdered Professor <laughs> Plum with the candlestick. <laughs> Don, Donald Mustard is you. He, he was the man for He's a visionary. You guys don't remember it? Yeah, yeah I think he spearheaded it when it no, was like he when did. it first took over. And then he stuck with this it. Until... rival, like Hillary Ketchup. <laughs> that sounds so dumb. <laughs> it is dumb. I'm, brother, I'm always going to respect Donald Mustard, not just because of Fortnite. Not many people know this. He's actually one of the main guys behind a game that I think is highly underrated that was extremely ahead of its time for the Xbox called Advent Rising. Oh, I remember so that. Donald Must yeah, Donald Mustard before Epic Games worked on Advent Rising, which I believe was a planned trilogy. It's from 2005. 
And I loved that game. Yeah. It was so fucking good. That was the game where every single story beat had like five different outcomes and they actually radically changed the story. Um, yeah. kind of. That's, yeah, that's to, the like, one where. Kind of, yeah. That's the one where you're interrogating a woman and at any point you can just pull your gun out and shoot her in the head and then she's out of the story for the rest of the game. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, you don't remember that? You could be a dick at the. Oh, you could it. kill pretty much everyone you interacted with in the game once you were done talking to them. Oh, I do not. Are you thinking you of different do that games? Advent Rising. Are you thinking of different games? Maybe. Uh, Advent, Ri- Advent Rising. Look up Advent Rising right now, Andrew. I don't. I don't think you. Could, there, there were a couple choices you could make. Okay. I mean, the picture. The picture of okay. Advent Rising does have a woman on the front. With oh a man. shit! Yeah, there. There is a woman there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he might be rising. Right. Let's see. Um, Advent Rising was also really uh, interesting because when they released the game, they did this thing where if you buy the game, you have a chance at winning a million dollars. But what ended up happening is they could never afford the million dollar payday, so it just never happened. So it was just completely a fucking lie. So it's a scam. All, and it yeah. was Mustard, you said? Mustard did that? Yeah, Mustard Donald Mustard us? was behind that. What a son of a bitch. Good job, Donald Mustard. Such a good game, though. Oh my god, I'm so upset that we'll never see a sequel. To go back a second, I just looked this up, by the way, Charlie, to answer your question. The Apple verdict is being appealed by the to the Supreme Court right now by Epic. And apparently they also lost that one because it was decided by a judge, whereas the Google verdict was decided by a jury. jury. And mm, they that makes sense. apparently were able yeah. to prove that Google did a bunch of illegal shit. Um, so here, Sweeney attributed the win to revelations during the trial that Google had allegedly deleted or failed to keep records, such as chats about its secretive deals with app makers. The brazenness of Ooh. Google executives violating the law and then deleting all of the records of violating the law, Sweeney said, that was really astounding. This is very much not a normal court case. You don't expect the trillion dollar corporation to operate the way Google did. Doesn't surprise them, me. I guess. <laughs> not surprising. I'm happy. I like Google getting fucked. Yeah, whenever Google gets fucked, I'm happy. Charlie, I've I've never done this before. I made a mistake. First time in history. Oh, I'm not this, thinking yeah, of Advent Rising. Up. I'm thinking of Alpha Protocol. Do you remember that one? Yeah, Alpha Protocol, yeah. Fuck That's yeah. the one where every character can just be killed and change the story, and you can really, really affect the outcome through your choices. That's what I'm mixing those yeah, two up. My I didn't remember bad. Advent Rising having anything beyond a couple of like very small choices you could make, and it weren't really story-related, to be fair. You just told me like Xbox-style game that kind of flew under the radar and was super good, and I always think Alpha Protocol when I think of that. That game is underrated. That game was pretty yeah. fire. Okay. Well, here, editor, if you're listening, put me saying Alpha Protocol first so I'll look like way less of an idiot. No, there don't do that because yeah, now yeah. this wouldn't make sense. This wouldn't make sense. You're <laughs> the entire... the timeline. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't, you can't mess with the time stream, Andrew. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Oh, uh, well. I'll take the hit. Yeah, that's right. You will. <laughs> oh, well. Um. Yeah. I mean that's that's video game uh, information. Who are you guys fine with Baldur's Gate three winning game of the year? Hundred percent. What else would it be? Yeah. Any controversial opinions? Spider Man two was robbed. Twitter's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen I have seen Spider Man fans up in arms on Twitter. It's Just so accept it. It was crazy. a good game, but it was so close to Marvel Spider Man one that it's like it doesn't even deserve to be on the list in my opinion. What always makes me laugh every time is when they post ways to defend it. They post cutscenes. They never post mm-hmm, gameplay yeah. saying it's great. They post the cutscenes and going, "Look, this is the best game I've ever played." You're not playing it. You're watching it. To be fair, the game uh, technologically impressive. Like the data streaming that they've got in Marvel Spider Man Two, very impressive. But also on top of that, it, it's game of the year. It, like stop posting cutscenes. Yeah, <laughs> no, Baldur's Gate Three has incredible <laughs> cutscenes and gameplay. Yeah. This was a strong year for games. Mario Wonder and Resident Evil 4, both incredible as well. Island Wake 2, from what I heard, you guys really liked it. Also very good. Very like, good. Like, this was a stacked year, but Baldur's Gate 3, far and away the winner. Not even remotely a consideration in my mind. It, Baldur's no, Gate 3 yeah, was, was just definitely. such a fucking phenomenon. Which is so wild when you got fucking Mario Legend of Zelda in the list as well. 
Like it's crazy that this yeah. game from an indie, like an indie dev, like this small, well, not small, it's but this smaller, studio, is not like, indie. Baldur's Gate yeah, is a big yeah, series yeah, yeah. and has been for a long time. Yeah, but but but, but still, if they were like, indie, it, they are not anymore. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. zero percent. They're now going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really hope that this does, like, uh, you know, issue a comeback for those kinds of games in the future. Like, but I said that too. That I it, hope so. I. Having started playing it, I realize what the thing is. The trick is, you know, if you play um, Pillars of Eternity or Divinity Original Sin, all of the cutscenes, there are no cutscenes. It's basically just text boxes, right? You talk to an NPC and you get five paragraphs of text. The mm. average player doesn't have that sort of attention. But in Baldur's yeah. Gate, you just walk up to an NPC and you get a cutscene. And all of your friends can laugh at your naked character and your goofy makeup. <laughs> and that's what makes it so much fun and much more accessible. Yeah, Which is great. absolutely. It's such the a cut fun game. for sure. Mm. We, we we went back then to the Spider Man. Now now the cutscene uh, conversation makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, the Baldur's Gate three cutscenes really do make it way but more. The gameplay itself is so much fun too. Absolutely, it's just the the sandbox. There's so many things to do. Things, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I saw a retweet to a. Um, a tweet that was saying, you know, Spider Man 2's cutscenes are so good. How, how could Baldur's Gate 3 win over this? And then it was just a woman explaining all the fucking ways that she she uh, took out, like, the, the goblins or the orcs or whatever in Baldur's Gate yeah. 3 in that little segment. It was like two minutes long, just endless list of ways that people have managed to deal with them. And that's just one small, like, minor beat in the entire fucking game world of Baldur's Gate 3. And you take that idea and put it over all the other plot points and all the other game scenarios. It's just a game of unfettered, like, freedom, basically. It's insanely mm -hmm. yeah. uh, malleable. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's well it's deserved. I, no, no game has ever. Well, no game this year anyway has had the conversation just continue on like it has for Baldur's Gate three. Like it's just constantly been talked about since it released. Every other game kind of come out. Like even Tears of the Kingdom come out, and then it's just like we talk about it for a few weeks, and then it's just yeah. kind of done. But I, I still hear Baldur's Gate three constantly. I mean, let's even run the numbers. Baldur's Gate. When did Baldur's Gate release? Roughly. The Anyone? first one or this one? Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I don't remember. Mm, like a month. Uh, Was it September? Two months ago. Okay. Uh, looking it up. Uh, August 3rd of this month. Yeah, or this year. Jesus. August 3rd. So the game has been out for about, what, five months, give or take. It's still at 100,000 players on Steam. It's still the seventh biggest game on Steam. It's a for huge a fucking, fucking accomplishment. For an RPG, yeah. for a, like a, a, a RPG like that, that is insane. Yeah. When you're all of mm -hmm. your competitors, literally all of them in that category are multiplayer. Counter-Strike, Dota, PUBG, Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah. Every single competitor in the top 10 is a big multiplayer, never-ending game. Whereas Baldur's Gate 3, that's just a you know turn top-down RPG, still at 100k, seventh biggest game. Like, that's fucking huge. That's unreal. It's unfathomable. Yeah, it's like actually yeah. insane level of success. Yeah. And it's so cute because the 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 owner of the company, Larian, he genuinely seems like a really good guy that's put a lot on the line for for the studio as well, like the studio and these games. I think his name's Sven. Um, he oh, just he could have really... bungled this hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he had fucked this up, he would have gotten death threats. Like Baldur's Gate is the franchise in yeah. RPG gaming. On yeah. PC at least. <laughs> the next biggest single player game is Cyberpunk at 17th and that's because they had that massive DLC that just came out. But it's like Baldur's Gate is still just so fucking impressively big. I could tell you what, yeah. it's going to be that it's going to continue be, to be that big for the next you know, 3 until the next one probably. This is the kind of game that people people will just constantly replay because mm -hmm. you can. There's just so mm -hmm. many options, so many different things to do. It's going to continue to be massive. And yeah, like I said, Sven, uh, like this could have bankrupted their company entirely. It could have been awful. It was a giant risk. Like This is not the kind of thing publishers would go for generally, which is why they had to self-publish, obviously. But um, yeah, giant risk and it's paid off. So I, I think no other game deserves Game of the Year for sure. Yeah. Agreed. To me, it's the it's the Elden Ring of this year. It's it's just the phenomenon, the gaming thing. 
nothing else came yeah. close. There's so much goofy attention to detail too, because I think on the fifth of this month they had a major updates and they added penis physics. So your balls <laughs> jiggle now when your character moves around. It's yeah. like, who the fuck had time to do this? But it's great. It just adds more comedy. He's doing God's work. <laughs> I haven't played it since penis physics. I need to replay it. Yeah, now. they added ball jiggle <laughs> physics recently. You didn't play the penis physics update, Jackson? You fucked up. It no, makes I the didn't. game so much better. Have you seen the meme online currently about uh, there's a game called Cult of the Lamb? Yes. And they're adding a sex update to it. They are. It's like enormous. I love that game. I, I that don't game know. was I think, great. I think I think Baldur's Gate 3 did it better though. I think <laughs> it ha- it feels more more genuine in Baldur's Gate 3. This feels like a PR stunt. To be fair, yeah, they both have I bears agree. and there's a sex update, so two for two, I guess. Yeah. Mm. I need to play that game. I really do. That looks it's, fun. Cold of the Lamb. I would say wait for the update. It's a very very good game, but it is content light. I finished it really quickly. Um, so I would say wait for this update if it's going to add a bunch of stuff and then play it. But it was very good what I got yeah. out of it. It's very cute. Nice. All right. Any other gaming? Oh, we didn't, t- we didn't actually talk about the GTA trailer, did we? We talked about it before it came out, but I think it came out after the episode was recorded yeah. last week. So we have not mm. touched on GTA six yet. Like mm. actually talked about it. Uh, yeah, I'm blown away. I honestly am. <laughs> like, it, I had high expectations going in because it's fucking Rockstar. Uh, but the visuals look incredible and the world looks just insane. There's one thing they Agreed. need to do to win my vote. Just one thing. If they Put it in can accomplish that level of world building in gameplay, I'm sold. Yeah. If they can have that level of densely packed, super lifelike feeling, vibrant realistic, great looking, all that stuff in the trailer. If they can translate that to the gameplay, then I'll be totally fucking sold. But GTA yeah, kind of like GTA doesn't have that is- same issue as Red Dead Redemption 2 does, right? In your opinions? Cuz you mm. guys don't like Red Dead Redemption 2 for the because the gameplay is like super clunky and stuff. Yeah. And Grand Theft Auto gameplay was always only like solid like good it was never incredible but it it just gave you a lot of fun things to do that were all fine they all work the shooting is good the driving is good it's never like amazing but what i need is when you watch that six trailer which is gorgeous and incredibly well directed it's it's just really lifelike like there's just tons of shit going on tons of attention to detail the, it feels the detail blew me away yes yeah. it feels really really deep to consume and really really good to look at and watch if the gameplay mirrors that like if the city feels alive and it feels like it has that level of energy then i'm going to fucking love it but if i start playing the game and it's just kind of like, let's say, a slightly better five. And, you know, it's just kind of there. I'm not going to be nearly as impressed. Yeah, I think what the biggest hold up for me for the, uh, I think, the original GTA and Red Dead Redemption 2. Like, I praise Red Dead Redemption 2. But I think the thing that hurts it the most is just the mission, like the gameplay mission variety. I think mm-hmm. if they if they tidy that up. I think uh, I think it'll be fine. I, I've never really had a, a, the same problem as you guys with the gameplay for those games, so I, I guess I'm in a minority. It just needs here, to evolve, is all. Like it's it's yeah. all fine gameplay. There's nothing wrong with it, but like let's let's finally let's do, do a little different. more. Yeah. Now that you have games yeah. like uh, so, Saints Row back in the day was a great example. Their entire marketing back with one and two and three was, hey, Grand Theft Auto is fine, but like it's you don't do anything. You just drive around, shoot people. Who cares? It's all boring missions. We've got like insurance fraud and bank heists and big giant superhero shit and death arenas and all this cool stuff. And Grand Theft Auto needs something like that in the newest entry. They need to not just be five plus one. You know, it needs to be a truly next generation feeling game. Or I think people are going to be disappointed because the stakes are so high and the standards are so high now. Yeah, perhaps, but I, I definitely think it won't matter in terms of this game's success. This game is no. going to sell out like oh, immediately. Oh, in terms of be- revenue, it will not at all. But in terms of reception, I think it definitely will. If they make a Grand Theft Auto that gets like an 80 on Metacritic, that's going to fucking demolish them. That's going to hurt real that bad in the happen, future. Though. 
I just don't see I, that I, happening. I, yeah, no. I don't see that happening. But it will, oh, I would. I said the same thing for like Starfield, like the next Bethesda thing, and that wasn't even nominated in any <laughs> yeah. category as far as I remember. And people are finally turning year. on it. People are finally like, all the shit I see for it is negative. I have never seen any praise in the last month of it. It's all people reviewing it and con- deconstructing it and shitting on it and all that stuff. As deserved. Re- regardless, regardless, though, I do. I I think that it might. If the reception is low on GTA, I think it might hurt future Rockstar games and their perception in general. But I, this game, I think is going to the number one spot in the game's most sold list or whatever on Wikipedia. Like, I think this is going to break all the records. You know it's what's really funny? If Fortnite decided one day that the launcher costs one dollar. It would probably break that record for top game of all time. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. yeah, that's such a minuscule. They should do that. It's such a minuscule amount. No one's going to say no to that. Yeah. yeah pe- plenty of people. I'm not paying a dollar no, for Epic Game Store launcher. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, you will for the next fucking Charlie can't M&M afford concert. it. You know you will. It's all much for you his budget. You no, he, you will. You will. It's like, at some point, there's such a minuscule amount that you're like, fine. And just the raw amount of people doing that, you'd still make millions and millions from it, from it <laughs> <Yeah>. happening. <laughs> it's like actual microtransactions. Oh. Um, yeah, so to go back to GTA 6, though, like, the reason I know that this is going to be the biggest game ever, I mean, it's pretty self-evident, but, like, there's no games that my dad has reached out to me about ever in the history of me knowing the man, and I woke up on the day the trailer came out to a message from him saying, did you see the GTA 6 trailer? <laughs> like, he's actually, Aww. he, yeah, he yeah. even knows about it, like, and is, like, impressed by it. Like, come on. So I don't know. Minecraft, Minecraft and Fortnite are the, the mainstream, like, younger games for kids, teenagers, young adults, all that stuff. They are the thing. But if you talk to the older crowd, it's Grand Theft Auto. That that's the well, no, most kids, mainstream game in the world for them. You're you're also a little off though, because Grand Theft Auto Five is probably third place on that list for kids as well. Like on TikTok, every video has like GTA gameplay underneath it to keep them occupied. Every every kid. Oh plays yeah, GTA. I'm not I'm not at all dismissing that the kids are into it, but I'm saying if we had to look at just the adult audience and say what's their like number one game, their number one franchise in oh, gaming, yeah. it's Grand Theft Auto without a shadow of a doubt. It's not even close. Yeah, it's fair. I'd yeah. agree with that. I mean, the last GTA was literally like 12 years ago. Most of the people that played that during their teen years yep. are adults now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it, GTA news, uh, in addition to that, though, did you guys see that there's a bunch of like fucking, you know, wannabe internet celebrities or viral uh, internet people that are threatening to sue? Uh, Rockstar oh, for Miami co-opting Joker. their likenesses? Yeah, yeah. Miami yeah. Joker. Like Miami like, Joker. So fucking cringe. So fucking <laughs> cringe. So fucking the, cringe. He can't it's win. It's the only it game I've ever seen people do that. Like, well, Rockstar games in general, people do that for Rockstar games. But that's what I mean. It's like the only games that I ever see people like clamor to do that. Well, it's for attention. He has 0% chance of winning. It's clearly parody. It's absolutely parody. He will never win this lawsuit. It's not even one to one. They like dif- differentiated it enough where it's very clearly parody. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole mission in, um, it might be five, where you chase down a clear parody of Lindsay Lohan as paparazzi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You play yeah. the paparazzi. Yeah, I and and one. Grand Theft Auto, since the very beginning, has been parodying celebrities and companies and all that shit. There's another mission in Grand Theft Auto Five where you infiltrate Apple and you sabotage their new phone. But it's not Apple, oh, but it Apple? is. Yeah. Yeah, like this guy's not going to win. This is not a lawsuit for any anything. It's purely just for publicity. But it's just really, it's hilarious to me that it happens so fucking much with the Rockstar games. Like I remember one of the original ones was a woman tried to sue Rockstar because you know the the drawn images of scantily clad women on the loading screens. She mm-hmm. claimed that one of one of them was her. Oh, yeah, or something like that. And yeah, she tried the, to sue them. I don't the know bikini if woman on the beach. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that one. I think it was San Andreas, but I'm not sure. So regardless, one of the games had that and she tried to sue them. And it's just so many stories of that happening with Rockstar. And I feel like I never hear about it with other games. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's just a, um, it's just also a, 
Uh, what am I thinking of? It, it, like, it, it's their style as well because they're so mimicking, close to mimicking real life. There's more opportunity for this. Like, I don't think anyone's suing Halo for Master Chief looking exactly like them. You know. But that would be that would be cool if someone looked like Master. That Chief. That would be pretty fucking cool, actually. Or Mario. Yeah, <laughs> there's a short fat <laughs> yeah. Italian guy suing Nintendo because he's Mario. <laughs> he always wears a hat with an M on it. Everywhere he goes. <laughs> what a delightful little man. Uh, I, can shift, to... I can shift gears for us if you want, because I had a, a small topic. Um, is there mm -hmm. a celebrity that you guys yes. genuinely enjoy the work of? You don't, you're not laughing at them. They're not a lol cow. They're not any of that. You really like their stuff and their work, Plenty. but you also just don't at all like them as a person and you're kind of just like oh god oh no this guy logan paul he's such oh. a good fucking wrestler he is so good in the wwe oh. but i hate that guy really i didn't know he was that does good he play yeah. the heel does he play the heel in the wwe god, he does play the heel but like at this point it's he's like more than just the heel though he's like such an incredible draw to the sport it's incredible like he is so fucking good in the wwe wow. but i cannot stand him i can't so is he still a is he still a youtuber primarily or is he no. entirely in that world now no he's just entirely in that world now he still has his podcast i think but he's mainly just in that world now both so both he and jake did boxing right was he the one who kept going with boxing and did it for a while no it's mainly good. jake that's jake okay wow so they're both just so, now oh, doing oh, right. big like athletics shit Mm -hmm. Damn. Is there more money in it for them? I guess they don't lose audience, so they still can capitalize on an audience like outside of the WWE or boxing. And then they Yeah, make I think there's there's probably more money in WWE for Logan because of all the brand deals and all of the ancillary shit. Mm -hmm. Plus he has Prime. <laughs> Man, well yeah, and he has Prime, true. Prime is massive now as well. It's it is massive. Oh, yeah. fucking selling out everywhere. But yeah, I don't know it's if I also told a great story. Go ahead. I, sorry, I don't know if I told the story, but my girlfriend used to work at a uh, like a a whole a whole food store, basically, you know, like a grocery store kind of. And she did the stock for them, and she used to get so she used to come home ranting because th they would just constantly get calls from thirteen year old boys asking if they had Prime in stock, <laughs> shit like that. It was just constant. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's just constantly asking if they had Prime in stock. She got so fucking yeah. sick of it, and I just so. I ju it's just started being sold in Australia in the last few months. So I, I wanted to try it just to see what all the hype was about. So I actually bought one, which triggered her. But I did try it, and it tasted so fucking bad, man. <laughs> it tastes so bad. It's like acid. <laughs> it's so bad. I've, had, I've only had it once. I tried like three flavors. They were okay. I thought they were fine, but... All right, you're, maybe... you're clearly paid for it. You, you're clearly <laughs> being endorsed or whatever. <laughs> I, I just thought they were fine. No, yeah, I didn't matter. have the caffeinated you really ones, like though. Logan I had... Paul's stuff, Charlie. Do you have like a back yeah, alley so deal? Such a good wrestler. Oh, don't don't remind me. I'm fucking ashamed of liking Logan <laughs> Paul as a wrestler already. <laughs> it makes me so upset. <laughs> you could just join me and say his products are shit. Then, like, I'm not I'm not saying it because I don't. Wait, like but I'm not I'm not trying to lie about it. Like, I really thought they were fine. Like, I didn't think they were amazing, but they were they were fine. I didn't have the caffeinated ones. So, if, huh? Do you like those kinds of drinks generally? Um. Not really, actually. There's only a few I do like, like G Fuel Gamer Subs, like in that category. Prime, I put just outside of that. It's more of like a Gatorade, Powerade kind of thing. And yeah. I really only like Blue Powerade or, um, Same. what is it, Frost Gatorade? Mm, Frost yeah, is blue shit. One. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I put Prime I, more I, in like I, that category, and I'm usually not super big into those kind of I couldn't like, um, disagree with you less I think I'd put uh, prime in the battery acid category it tastes so fucking mm. bad it felt like my did, did you have melted. did you have the caffeinated one I don't know I don't know I didn't look that closely let me have a look it was the blue that, one does that make a difference I don't think I ever had a blue one so blue raspberry I don't know, maybe that's one of the caffeinated been, ones blue raspberry yeah that, that's it I don't know if it's caffeinated or not I can't it, no it says caffeine free I haven't tried that one. Then maybe that one's just like super shit. It, it's, it's tasted so fucking. Bad. I took one sip and I was like, "Nope, this is awful." You're making me want to try it now. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just not made for those drinks. I don't know. 
You're not 13. I'm not, I'm not 14. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what were you going to say before I interrupted you? Sorry, Andrew. I want to tell that story. Uh, I don't remember at all. It was about celebrities. Uh, well, I was just asking all of us the question if there's a celebrity whose work you like, but you don't like them as a person. So if you have an answer, mm. or Kaya. There aren't really any celebrities I do like. That's fair. I didn't I mean, think I about this question as... in terms of you. <laughs> You're totally right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of agree with him. Though. Like, there's only a few celebrities that I would say I like as a person, like in quotation marks, because I yeah. don't know any of them as people. So it's hard for I don't, me to really I don't say. mean, yeah, I don't mean on a personal level, like, oh, I like this guy, I'd have a beer with yeah. him. I mean, if there's a celebrity out there where you clearly just, from what you've seen, think they're kind of scummy or not great or a piece of shit, but their work, you like it, you consume it, you're like, damn, they're talented, this is good shit. I can't think of anyone. Mm. I guess... <laughs> I guess Louis C.K., because he kind of got, like, semi-canceled a few years back for jerking off on the telephone to a woman. Um, and I love his comedy so much. His comedy is great. I guess that. But I don't know, I don't okay. know if he's a piece of shit or anything. I mean, I, I think Charlie's answer like, was Patrick. really good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, Logan Paul's good. Yeah. I can also share yeah. mine. Um, so the reason yeah, I brought this up is I'm sure you all have heard of Dave Mustaine, the guitarist. No. So he's the guitarist of Megadeth. One of the biggest metal bands in the world ever of all time. Um, he used to be in Metallica way back in the early days. Um, so Dave Mustaine is a like conspiracy nut and apparently a raging asshole. The band Megadeth, the band Megadeth has gone through like 25, 30 different musicians because they keep quitting because Dave is so unlikable and hard to work with. Um, oh, nice. uh, allegedly back when he was in Metallica, one of the reasons that he got kicked out is he would drink too much and start fights with band members, like physical fights. And there's rumors that he kicked one of the band members' dogs just to be an asshole. Oh, Jesus. That just sounds like a old school rock star. I was going to say, what, like, how bad do you have to be for other rock stars to be like, whoa, this guy drinks exactly. too much. Exactly, and he plays <laughs> heavy fuck? metal as well. The most, like, yeah. big, dickest, violent mu music there is. And if you look at his lyrics for his songs, everything is, I hate the government, fuck the government, the government sucks. I don't want to say the government did 9-11, but I have very strong feelings that the government totally <laughs> did 9-11. Like, all this it's shit. Poetic. Like, all of it. All, back to back to back. But... Having said all of that, the dude is one hell of a guitar player and writes some yeah. really fucking catchy songs. And he is oh, an incredible God. musician. He's so amazing. Many people like that in the music, the music industry for sure. Like it must be. I also wouldn't of... lump the government sucks in with kicking dogs, but that just me. Maybe. No, but he goes he goes to conspiracy levels. Like one controversy he got into. I don't know the details of it, but apparently he at one point hinted that he doesn't think the Sandy Hook shooting was real. Oh, like really terrible yeah, okay. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That one's that one's pretty Ooh. high up there on the. I, I believe team. he said it once during a show, and then never brought it up again because of the controversy. But there's a lot, a lot of stories and a lot of things written about him about how he is just really an unlikable dude, just a real jackass. We can recover this guy. Was the member of Metallica that he kicked laws? I believe it was Kirk, not Kirk, uh, James, the main guy. All right, never mind. Yeah, and that's he's, he's that's the scores. wrong one to kick. He's the he's the real talent at that fucking band. Yeah. If, if he kicked Lars, shame. no one would care. No one would give yeah. a shit. <laughs> God, Everyone Lars sucks. Here. Yeah, Lars fucking <laughs> sucks. Lars fucking sucks. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's such um, a dweeb. What a everyone would clap <laughs> if he kicked Lars. They'd be like, thank God. But I believe it was Kirk. Uh, I keep saying Kirk. Jesus, Kirk is who replaced him. He kicked uh, James, the main, the the head of the band, oh, right. which is not the guy James you want to kick. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, he he. There's just tons and tons of articles and stories I've read where it's just like, man, he's such a douche. But boy, howdy, can he play a guitar? Can he write a catchy song? Is he fucking talented? Holy shit! Yeah, the music industry has to be like probably probably the most full of people like that where they're very clearly 
talented because you i feel like music the music industry is where you can see talent the clearest i think especially because you're you see them on stage actually doing the things that they're talented at doing so you can see mm-hmm. the talent but then you also hear stories of them being absolute you know maniacs especially with all the drugs you know alcohol shit yeah. like that right so i think the music industry is just full of people like so that personally. someone in our chat our patreon chat which you can sign up for at uh patreon.com slash the official podcast brought up another good point that i didn't remember He's also a born again Christian and has used that as leverage to completely and utterly shit on other people all that he can. He's like, oh, you're you're not religious. You're just worse than me. You're just a bad person for not believing in God. Oh, so the so the insufferable kind of religious. Yes, person. absolutely. And he's also used that to like refrain from playing certain songs because he's like, oh, these are these are blasphemous. I wouldn't write this now. This isn't good anymore. Like it just really on his high horse about being religious insufferable then yeah yeah he's he's there's a lot of reading you can do of just very scummy things but god damn it i can't deny i love his music i really I was, do i was gonna i was gonna jump down your throat for a second there if it, if the argument against him was just he's like religious but it does sound like he's just like actually yeah insufferable well when you kick a man's dog it's kind of hard to like yeah. you. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that is that is ridiculous that is yeah that's disgusting what a yeah. piece of shit <laughs> do you guys think this is weird i was thinking about this the other day i think it's weird really weird that you're not allowed to hit dogs which is i'm completely okay with obviously like don't hit dogs don't hit animals but for some reason society thinks it's okay to hit children well, not really <laughs> yeah i don't know where you're seeing that <laughs> there isn't there isn't some huge movement in favor of beating kids no, what, what, no, okay. I'm not, I'm not saying you go around beating other people's kids, but I'm saying like... Uh, Even your own you know, kids, most people are, aren't like, beat the shit out of your kid. <laughs> no, Do it. Like, sma- okay, smacking them for discipline. <laughs> like, oh, you know what I meant, obviously. Like, people are more okay with that than hitting dogs, for example. I don't think... Do you mean like, like okay. a spanking or something? But yeah, like, a, like discipline. Yeah. Like discipline, yeah. Like oh, okay. Spanking. Yeah, I, I definitely think people are Are you just more thinking okay of the boomer meme? Where they're like, my daddy used to beat me and I turned out fine. Like that sort of yeah. braggadocious, you kids are soft. Yeah, but that's like dying out. I don't think most people are in favor of... It's still, it's still a thing. I, I, I don't know how many people would still be alright with it or not. I feel like it's still a thing though. I would never hit yeah, a Yeah, but I think most my people kid. recognize it as just being trashy now. Yeah, probably. We're just talking about beating kids, right? Yeah, just generally just going out yeah, and fighting kids to beat they, So back in the past, it used to be kind of acceptable for a lot of people. I mean, you know, there was that culture <laughs> of, oh, I just smack him with a belt a little bit or whatever when he's talking back. Yeah, how else are they going to learn? Exactly. Yeah, but I, I think with the internet now where people are exposing, hey, that's actually super wrong and you shouldn't ever hit your fucking kids. Like, it's that's becoming way less of a thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just, it's just funny to me, the disconnect between, like, nearly everyone universally is like, whoa, I would never hit my dog. That's fucked up. They don't know what they're, they're not, they don't know they're in the wrong or whatever. That's messed up. But then the opposite is like, well, at least historically, they're like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all right to hit, hit your kid for discipline. It's because they assign know. more intelligence to kids. They're like, oh, they're a kid. Oh, they yeah. should know better. But a dog will never know better. But isn't that worse? Isn't that worse? Well, like, you should never a hit a kid in general. It's always bad. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel like you're going back and forth on your point, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, Jackson. The only time what you should ever hit a kid, say, if it, you the only go ahead. Sorry, uh, I think what you are trying to say is that if you like smack your cat, your cat isn't gonna learn anything from that. It exactly. doesn't even know what the fuck it did wrong. Exactly. Or anything, so that's... but a kid might. That's the excuse. The kid is until it's a human being. It's supposed to learn that it's not allowed to do that. Hmm. Like break the vase or whatever. Yeah. All right, I just want to I just want to reiterate though, both are very bad in my eyes. Just just so I'm putting it out there, I don't think both are good. Controversial opinion. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, I I, I don't want to be painted as a guy that wants to beat kids or dogs. I wouldn't blame a guy for like once in a lifetime snapping at his fucking little shit of a kid and then slapping him. But if it's just daily belt beatings, all because whatever you didn't do your homework or you just you were too loud while I'm trying to drink and fall asleep on the couch, yeah, you're gonna have a messed up kid. You know, I mean, I I, I don't like think once. Be, I don't even think once because it's like I, I feel like adults no. should have a better better handle on regulating their behavior, and that seems like an outburst, yeah, especially if it's just Jackson, one time. But, 
you're a human being too at the end of the day. You're going to make mistakes. It's I don't consider that a mistake though. It's like dangerous territory. Well, of course it's a mistake. I'm just saying that is still different from the guy who's like openly bragging yeah. about beating his kid and whatnot. Yeah. Did uh did this it's did like, this guy from Metallica ever brag about beating his kids at all, Andrew? <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Did the guy from Metallica that you're talking about ever beat his kids? Did he talk about that? Um, you know, I don't think he did. I I hopefully don't think he does. I don't even know if he has. What was his kids. name again? Dave Mustaine or Dave Mustaine. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I think it's it's Must. You got it right the first time. I yeah. think it's Mustaine. I think it is Mustaine. He does have um, kids. Yeah, it's mustard. <laughs> Dave Mustard. He's replacing the other guy. The other mustard. Donald. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got to. I've got to get going. All right, let's wrap it there then. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode. I wanted to really quickly shout out uh, Criminally Stupid, the show Kai and my, myself do on YouTube, as well as the Red Thread or Red Thread, which is killing it currently. It is the second highest true crime podcast out of any fucking true crime podcast, which is nuts. And we're just closing in on the number 10 spot in all podcasts that have ever existed or the charts. Or we're whatever. right behind Bobby Lee's show right now, I think, for that, <laughs> which, which is, is fucking, fucking crazy. Insane. So thank you so much if you've listened to it um i was talking to charlie the other day i'm really happy to have a show that i can actually recommend to family and friends like i feel bad recommending criminally stupid or this show to friends and family but with the uh, with red thread i actually feel like i can recommend it to people (laughs) which is which is cool so definitely go check it out if you haven't already and patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes including early access Mm -hmm. to those shows as well stuff like that uh, we'll have an episode of Criminally Stupid coming out very soon this week, so keep an eye out for that. We appreciate the support on all of the shows and the YouTube channel in general. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for everything. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye-bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.